You were listening to episode 196 of the Game Deflators podcast. My name is John, and I'm joined by Ryan. Hey, everybody here at the Game Deflators podcast. We like to talk about games. We've recently picked up games we're currently playing, and we drop into nostalgia in this week's Inflation Deflation Challenge. So, guys, this week we, uh, as Ryan said, dropped into nostalgia with Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2. We played the remake this week because I think you and I have a lot of extensive experience with the originals. And uh, it was about time that we booted these up. Yeah, yeah. And it's always good to go back and take another look at something. That's what we're doing this month. So a remaster is a perfect way to do that. So sequels of sequels for sequel month. Sequels within sequels. It's a sequelception. All right. Well, as we always start with our episodes, um, well, no, I'm going to change it up, Ryan. I'm going to change it up. So as I always randomly do starting episodes, you can find us on thegamedeflators.com. You can find us on social media at Game Deflators on Twitter at The Game Deflators on Instagram and Facebook. And of course, you can find us on all those podcast apps that you listen to, including this one. All right. So pickups. Ryan, this week, biggest pickup of my life. Trigger Man on the PlayStation 2. What? I'm just I'm just kidding. It's one of my pickups, but it's not the biggest. Um, I finally got Dragon Seeds on PS1. Oh, no way. Yeah, so I... Dude, I'm so pumped. That was like my favorite blockbuster rental. That's like one of the few PS1 games that I actually want to buy to own. It's been on my Amazon wish list for like, like eight years. So... I got kind of lucky. Most of the Dragon Seed uh, copies that you find on like eBay are either loose and are like 50, 60 bucks is for a loose copy or they're like complete at one hundred and twenty to one hundred thirty dollars. Right. The guy that I got this from on eBay, complete in box, sent me an offer for seventy dollars. I was like, why is this so low? I'm like, there's no reason. Like and it looks almost pristine. Like there's some light, you know, scuffs on it like there normally would be from just kind of, you know, probably going into a sleeve. Um, it's cause he listed it wrong on eBay. He misspelled mm. the title. So when I was, I, I guess, no, I don't know what he did, but like, I think it was like all together and it was like dragon seeds, PS one, like all together or something. I don't remember, but like basically it was misspelled because it if was I just tried under to, the radar. Yeah. So if I tried to search like dragon seed or dragon seeds, PS one, like on its own, his thing didn't pop up. Like I looked at all the listings that I could find and his did not pop up every single like variation of like how it should be. And then like, I randomly kind of had it in my, you know, in my feed for eBay on things I should purchase. So I got super lucky. I feel to get a complete in box copy for that price point. I know that uh Lukey games, I think it is had it like kind of like an 80 or 85 complete a while back, but that's not including all their shipping costs. This was straight up, 70 bucks with shipping. So I think in total with tax and everything, it came with like, I don't know, something like $77 for dude, everything. I'm was all so similar. excited. Yeah, I'm stoked, dude. Like it's technically on a, on the RPG list. So it's another RPG knocked off the list. So I'm, I'm stoked about that. Folks, the one that what I'm not uh, stoked about is I'm going to have to buy Persona 1 at some point. Yeah, I, I'm yeah. here to teach you a very valuable lesson about video game collecting. There's... There's really two schools of thoughts. There's collecting video games and becoming friends with people who collect video games. <laughs> and one of them is vastly cheaper than the other, but still gives you access to large quantities of games, especially <laughs> memorable ones from your childhood on occasion. So I'm here to advocate for the second type of collecting. Oh, my God, dude. Collecting doesn't friend. want more friends. <laughs> collecting friends that collect video games. I like that. That's good shit. Um, so outside of those two pickups, I, I can't remember if I had any other pickups. I probably did, but I just can't remember. Um, games that you I didn't this clean week, up at the Goodwill this week. You know, actually, I got You've been on at Goodwill. a pretty hot streak. You know, they kind of they've had some games like yesterday. I went in and they had Trigger Man and Cooking Mama and some other games. I'm like, eh, do I really want Cooking Mama and some of these other titles? Probably not. So. I didn't pick them up, but like they had some decent stuff like Fable 3 was still in there and uh, Halo games and whatnot. They've had some decent things coming in. 
Uh, I just oh, given that all everything that's on Game Pass is showing up at Goodwill. It sounds like. <laughs> yeah, actually, I'm okay with that. So that works. Um, so other than that, though, uh, this week I became oh, Elden what? Lord. What? what? Nice. Yeah, I, be, I became Elden Lord this week. You didn't text me. I forgot to. It's wait. No, no, no. If you would pay attention to our Instagram and Twitter, I posted on there. That's not the same as texting me. I know it isn't, but it's close enough. So, uh, yeah, I became Elden Lord. I got probably the crap ending. I don't know. Um, I kind of started getting the the seals. Did you get? I don't even know. A lot. You don't have to get all of them. You can you can like beat the game with just like two. Well, I beat all the main bosses. Okay. So all the main bosses were beat. Um, and then I started working a lot of the optional bosses. But the thing is, there's so many optional bosses. The, the thing that's bugging me, though, like I was starting to get bored while playing. But now that I've stopped playing, I'm like, I kind of want to keep playing. So, <laughs> well, I mean, I don't you can use those larval tiers and just like try other builds super easy. Yeah, and I did actually. So I switched up my build to be um, a little heavier on intelligence dexterity some strength and vigor and then some mind because i needed some mind on there but overall yeah like it was i've switched it up a few times i might go into it and invade and whatnot and play that way and just keep invading people uh but i'm not sure like i like i want to keep playing but at the same time like there's other games to play yeah and that's what gets me so yeah. We'll see. Maybe what I'll do is wait till the expansion comes out. When the expansion comes out, then I'll revisit. There you go. That might be the best best play. Um, but I did play some Demon for all of this week. But I really want to play this game with you because I keep dying after the second level. Um, it's I'll very have hard. to uh, give it a try on my own so that we can play together. It is two player. Yeah, and it is hard. It is That's very hard. Saying so, you get one life per character. That's it. Four levels one life you die you die there's from what i've seen there is no resurrecting characters nothing like once your character's dead it's dead and so i have been able to get past the first two bosses and i think if there was a second person it might be easier yeah, um, unless i'm a giant liability which is more likely than not <laughs> uh, i don't know it's, it's just practice it practice and you'll get used to it but it's it's pretty cool overall like each character the problem is, is each character has like their own thing that they're good with so like there's an intelligence boost for the character uh there's also like a tempo boost and some other things and like bombs and other things that you pick is up it, to like increase is it two-player oh. dock or uh you don't play handheld but i mostly play handheld so should yeah, i practice with should... my pro controller yeah and then you should bring your pro controller to my house so we can connect and play on one tv it's wired, but I think it's got a long ass cord. That's fine. I mean, you can just bring your Joy Cons too if you really wanted to. Um, you don't have extra Joy Cons? No, dude. It's it's only really my wife and I only play one player games for the most part. I have even I have three sets because I fixed them. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I don't have any extra sets. I should, but I I just don't. Um, but yeah, let's play. Let's do that next week. Well, no, okay. we have sequ we have sequel months, so we can't. Yeah technically do that um we should still play it though you should come over early and we should beat it because it's only an hour long if you go through all the levels we'll play it we'll talk about it yeah yeah we'll figure it out uh but we have to decide a sequel next week the next game i am thinking of playing though is going to be majora's mask okay which so, one uh i don't know maybe the one on the n64 go original i haven't decided although i do have it on the gamecube but i don't really want to hook up my gamecube as a thing so you should check out the 3ds one i don't think wait do i have it i might have it actually if i do i might play it on 3ds then yeah the, I, might, uh, I might do that the first one i i didn't beat it but i played it and i thought that the 3d effect was pretty good so i can imagine that the majora's one probably looks even better well i've heard majora's mask is better than link um uh what is it ocarina of time from a story perspective at least so I don't know. Maybe I'll enjoy it. This more. will give you that ability to play anywhere. Yeah, that's true. All right. I'll look into it. Or see it if might I even it. be on the Nintendo thing. Is it on the Nintendo thing? I think it is on N64. Nintendo switch online. Yeah, I think it is, but I don't have the Nintendo online still. I never did get it. So it's 20 bucks for a year. Yeah. But the N64 one comes out to like 40, I think. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Um, so, and I already have it on at least N64 and GameCube. So, yeah 
should I really honestly like pay for a I service to play a game I already have? You know? Yes. Yes, you should. Oh, uh, I shouldn't. <laughs> I really shouldn't. I need to buy uh, Cthulhu Age of Madness with that 40 yeah. something dollars. Yeah. Uh, OK, so that's what I did this week. What about you? Uh, so <clears throat> play date week three update two new games uh this week we have pick pack pup which is an interesting kind of like a connect three game where you've got um a grid with a variety of different items on it and as soon as you connect three they turn into a box and then all the boxes that are touching each other when you click on them they send away and you can click on one thing and drag it anywhere and move it to a line, you know, a grid of three or four or however you can arrange them. But any of the ones that shift as you move past, if they land into alignment, those will automatically like block stuff off. So it's pretty light. Like there's not like a falling element because the grid just fills up with the boxes. So it's not like, I don't know, it's not the heaviest puzzle game. It seems really simple most of the time, but it'll have like, we need 500 bananas for this level or whatever. So it's just a kind of fun little time waster game. And then the other one this week is Lost Your Marbles, which is this kind of weird story, uh, this kind of weird main character girl. Uh, is going to take her dog on a walk and she's like, oh, I'll just take him to the lab with me instead. And she just doesn't realize that like, why, why is everybody telling her that it wouldn't be a good idea to take it to the lab? And you find out like the doctor at the lab is a cat. So it's, <laughs> it's silly. Uh, some of the humor is like pretty good. It made me chuckle a little bit, uh, but the puzzle element of this you use the crank and you only use the lower half of the crank and you're tilting like the screen left and right and there's a marble and you've got to like navigate through obstacles and in each area there are light bulbs so it'll be like two or three light bulbs and you have to hit the light bulb with enough momentum for the marble to crack it. And once you crack it, you get to see what the idea in that marble is or in that light bulb is. And each of the little stages comes up as the result of a question. So they will be like, when your dog goes missing, it's like, okay, uh, we go to the library, grab uh, some paper. And it's like, you could get parchment or you can get sandwich paper. I got parchment. So it's like, the missing poster is this like old ye old English style missing poster and it doesn't say anything useful on it. And the picture is like a super zoomed in picture because it was like a picture of the butt or a picture that's too zoomed in or another picture. And that's just the one that I landed on. So you can replay these puzzles and get, different kind of like Mad Lib style answers to how the story progresses. So that's kind of cute and fun. Um, other than that, picked up Tony Hawk one and two. Thank you. PS plus same. Um, haven't been playing too much this week. I have been playing the secret game and John, this may be your last guess before I finish. And I will let you, I will let you have one guess. Like when I finish, like if it's going to be next week, I'll give you one more guess before I finish. You're going to finish a game. Yeah. Okay. So I asked last week if the game had been released in 2022 and you said no, correct? Correct. Oh man. Um, so before we get to the secret game. Okay. What I have been doing this week is watching the Dota 2 Arlington Major, and it's been awesome. Uh, I'm hyped for it again. Uh, even though most of the players that I was really into, they're gone, a lot of the casters are still there. 
And I mean, the casters are the people who you actually hear. Like you watch the players play, but you hear the casters talk through all the matches. So um, the panels are a lot different, but I actually really like the balance on the new panels. Like not that, not that I have like super high, you know, opinions or anything about, you know, any of it, but like, you know, I know that some people (laughs) maybe were not so popular on the panel when I was watching before. And, uh, there was definitely, you know, there was definitely something that I used to really like. And I would be like, you know, if the panel was going to be different at an event, sometimes I wouldn't be so into it, but I'm really into everybody that's involved in it now. And I think they're doing a really good production. Uh, the games are going really good. I've been picking relatively poorly. Uh, I've got, I think I'm on like 78th out of like 200 and something people, but like the first place people, they must like do this all the time because they've got like 30,000 points and I'm like hovering in like the five thousands. So, um, right now as we speak, uh, OG and beast coast are playing their third match and OG is up. So, We'll see how that goes. And then uh, tomorrow should be the finals. And I'll be super pumped for that. TI will be around the corner. I think there's going to be one more major event maybe before TI. Uh, They moved it later in the year. It used to be in like July. So I'm I'm trying to think of what you're playing. And all right. Secret question time. I am going to guess. Are you going to ask first or are you going to guess first? Hmm. I'm going to guess first because then I don't have to worry about this. Uh, Are you playing one of the Bloodstained games? No. Okay. All right. Question number four. Um, That's a pretty good guess, though. I, I do have that game. Yeah, you do. And it is a game that I would like to play. Is it a Metroidvania? Yeah, but the Switch one is, like, really poor. Like, I don't know if they've gone through and updated it all the way, but, like, sometimes the frame rate just chugs in that game when it came out. Yeah, I still didn't pick it up. Uh, Is it a Metroidvania? No. Damn. See, if you had asked that first, then you wouldn't wouldn't have wasted your guess. No, because I really thought it could be that. So I mixed it up this week. Had to mix it up. All right, well... Let's get into our topics. This week, we're going to be talking about the next Xbox Game Pass Ultimate Upgrade that is going to make your PC games redundant. That one's uh, Callum Baines at Tech Radar. Uh, We are going to be talking about an upcoming Steam game that is literally just a squirrel of a gun. I think it's called Squirrel of a Gun, and that's uh, Zach Zwiezen at Kotaku. And uh, the last topic here is Microsoft has claimed that Sony pays for blocking rights to keep games off of Xbox Game Pass. And that's Tom Warren at The Verge. We'll start at the top of the order here. Uh, Making your PC obsolete with some streaming on xCloud. Um, I personally think it's a little bit redundant. Like I know how it says like it's going to make your PC redundant. I think the service is redundant. You know, we've already got tons of cloud gaming experiences kind of tons of cloud gaming experiences already. Um, So that kind of sucks, just having another one there. And then also, you can already play a good chunk of games on your PC via, via, you know, Game Pass for PC. So, like, I get the component of being able to stream. You don't have to worry about the hardware, and you don't have to get, like, this crazy good PC out there. But, yeah. Once I get that clip that will put my phone on my xbox controller i can play elden ring anywhere dude anywhere you can but do you really want to why not because like why Steam deck people can do it why can't i well there you go that's another thing that's redundant you got steam deck why do you need to play elden ring on your phone when you can get steam deck because i don't want a steam deck (laughs) i don't have a giant steam library and i don't and i wouldn't get one just for a steam deck well maybe you could put game pass on the steam deck i can just do it on my phone already you could but then you waste your phone battery (laughs) 
Like, I don't carry a charger with me everywhere I go. That's true. Yeah, you do carry everything with you. Um, No, I think it's redundant, dude. There's just so much out there. Like, why do I need to get another cloud type service at this point? Like, it's not adding a service. It's what they're saying here, John, is right now you can cloud everything on Game Pass. Now they're saying, all right, let's just let you cloud everything that you own through Microsoft Store on yeah, so Xbox. If, so if you anything want to, that's in your library, you can just play remote. Yeah. So if you want to do that, it is a $15 a month charge versus the other base charges. So if you're a PC gamer predominantly and say you do have some Xbox games that you would maybe like to play on PC, why would you play it on PC when you have it on Xbox? And I get that you can take it anywhere and play it wherever you want. It just to me, it just isn't appealing. Like, why do I need to take my Xbox games on my phone, basically? Because that's really all this is going to be good for is on the phone. Unless well, you so have a comp- like this like is if you have the future, John, like think about the implications of this for people that already do most of their gaming on the phone. This is opening the door for them to be able to go in and basically just make purchases without needing a console or a PC. Like if they're available to stream, that means you don't need either of those devices. You just have your phone, go to the Microsoft store and say, Oh, I want to play, I don't know, Witcher three. And then boom, now you're playing Witcher three on your mobile phone and you're 13 and it's the best of all realities. I just find zero appeal in that. And, you know, well, this specifically, don't. this specifically, those calling out redundancy of high end PCs because you can stream. Right. And the idea is, oh, well, now I can play my Xbox Game Pass games and games I already own on an Xbox on my PC, which might not be a very good PC. Why would I even do that if I have the game on Game Pass and I have an Xbox Why the hell would I play it on a out of date PC? That makes zero sense to me. Like (laughs) my PC is in I'm sitting in front of my PC right now as we record. I have a PlayStation 5, for example, in the other room. Why would I choose to go to my PC and stream a game on the Internet? So I have versus just playing it. I have a terrible laptop or not terrible, but like I have an older laptop and it has no gaming stuff in it at all. But, yeah, but you have I mean, a Series that, S. Yeah, but so, I don't have a Series X. Yeah, so but, I could stream Series X quality to my old 2016 HP and probably get as good a performance as I can out of my Series S here. But what's the resolution on your TV compared to the resolution on your older laptop that's four or five years old? I mean, because laptops like, are already like pretty crisp monitors compared to like... Hmm. I mean, if, either way, I would be playing it on the same monitor. I've got like a side monitor here. Yeah, but I mean, like if you were playing on your big screen or your bigger screen, right, your 65, 75 inch on your Series S, what would compel you and be better to stream it on your PC or laptop upstairs? I could plug my laptop into that same TV, the same as but, I could plug my Xbox in. But why it's would you do Xbox. that when it? But why would you do that when the Xbox is already hooked up? You get what I mean? Like, well, if I didn't own an Xbox, if I didn't own an Xbox, I could take this laptop and I wouldn't even have needed to buy this Xbox. Yeah. And I literally could have the same capacity without having made that investment. Yeah. That's where it's at. Yeah, I guess I can see that's where it's at. But then, you know, or I wouldn't have been able to go buy Elden Ring and play it on here. Because it wouldn't be available for streaming. Now that I'll be able to stream games that I can purchase, like now I don't ever need an Xbox. Yeah, but at that point, you really don't need a PC either because you could technically stream them to your TV down the road, theoretically, or your phone, like you're saying. So I, I think the key thing here for me is the PC redundancy. I just think it's a stupid comment to make. Like, why would why would you want to? Right. Why? If you have an Xbox already, I can see the point if you don't have an Xbox. Right. Yeah. Which is and you like, just have a PC. I can get that. But if you're a gamer, you likely if you're a PC gamer. What about PlayStation people? I'm not buying Xbox. And if I do, it's a Series S and I'll do like the base thing. Or I might just get a PC in general and play PC exclusive games. I'm not looking to get like 
Game Pass specifically, so I can play like PS5 games on my on my computer and stream yeah. them. Like, there's no purpose for me in doing that. This is also so anybody that was like a PlayStation person playing Call of Duty, you know, we're gonna talk about this uh a little bit later but like if you're not going to have the option in the future like of buying it on xbox or buying it on playstation if the option is going to be buying it on playstation or getting game pass and having access to it and you don't even have to pay 60 dollars for it in that world if you know you still want your playstation you can get it. But if you're just like, all right, well, I don't even need to buy a PlayStation. Then I can just play with all my friends uh, by plugging my laptop into my TV. Yeah. So like no, they're going to, in the future, they're going to be able to capture a lot of people potentially away from, you know, making that choice to do that purchase with a competitor. Yeah. Well, you know, the only the only way I see this as like a viable like I really want this type of service is if you honestly don't own one of the two or three consoles. That's the only reason I see getting this service like that tier of service of $15 and streaming and everything to your laptop. It's the only reason, right? Because it's <clears throat> in a sense, it's more direct competition to Stadia or Stadia, however you want to call it. Stadia is um, like. Yeah, I get it. But like it's that's where it's more of a competition for it, right? Like that's who they're trying to affect in this instance, right? Because of this, the direct streaming, no need for hardware. Well, Sony all that. just revamped their whole thing to include like all that stuff for streaming and nobody still cares. Yeah. So it's just interesting. And this has been going on since I think 2019 is when they first oh. announced this and said it would go into effect in 2020. And here we are in 2022 and are still in beta stage. I missed talking about something earlier. What's that? Uh, you remember the Sony gear that we talked about a few weeks ago? Mm -hmm. uh, its ads have been plastered all over the Arlington Major. And every time they do like zoom shots of like where the players are, you can see like the Sony monitor with like the headset draped over it. But then when you look at the players, none of them are using any of that equipment. They're using completely different monitors, completely different headsets. Like they're not touching any of it, but it's like right there just next to them. And then you, every time they run an ad break, they run like two Sony ads. Well, I mean, it's not. They're getting the word out there. Yeah, that's that's what it is right now. It's not like this mainstream piece of equipment that people are in right now because it's so technically new in a way. It's a new yeah. product, so I can I can understand why. I just, maybe I wanted to bring that up before maybe I forgot next year about will be it. better. But uh, yeah, give us your thoughts on this um, on social media. What your opinion is? Um, you know, do you kind of look at Ryan's view or or my view, whatever it is, in terms of redundancy versus you know more innovation? I guess. Uh, but right. next thing we have here, we'll this actually dive headline. into that. <laughs> we'll we'll dive into the Microsoft claims okay. one first, and then we'll go into that one last. But um, so Microsoft claims Sony is paying for blocking rights to keep games off of Xbox Game Pass. Uh, Ryan, it's, you start first. It's going down in Brazil, man. Like, I don't know why that's where this war is being fought, but it's going down in Brazil. So Sony, they had things to say last week, and now Xbox is coming back and being like, well, you know what? Sony pays people to not be on our platform. Uh, what do you think about that trade commissions? And uh, I don't know, you know, it just seems like the pettiest like <laughs> thing, like neither of these companies is being fully transparent. You know, we know that there's like the writings on the wall for the future of this deal. Like once this goes through, it's going to be bad news for Sony at some point down the road. And, and, a lot of this is over all of that Call of Duty stuff, too. But, you know, they just don't want to play ball. Sony doesn't want to have to compete with having to put out day one titles on a service the way that Xbox is trying to do with Game Pass. And 
they're still going to let Call of Duty be sold on PlayStation platforms, but if they don't sell it on Xbox and just put it on Game Pass, you know, people that only play Call of Duty and like we were just talking about in that other article, you know, they're going to have more options moving forward than paying $70 now for the new one and it being, you know, moving into a live service future means that they're not going to be able to make one every year and drive it into the ground. Hopefully they'll, you know, have some better stewardship and maybe they'll be able to, you know, be successful with it. But either way, at the end of the day, you know, both of these companies pay for exclusivity, you know, temporary or permanent or, you know, have second party studios that, you know, basically only develop for their platforms. You know, that happens all across the board. And it's ridiculous for either of them to say that they do or don't do that as often as anybody else. And I I don't know if this is going to help or hurt anything, like anything that they're saying realistically. Like, I don't know if Brazil is going to shut this deal down because of this or anything, but it is... It is interesting to see what they have to say when it comes to, you know, these types of opinions. Yeah, so I'm really excited about reading into all this stuff because the Brazilian documentation, it's because Brazil apparently makes this type of stuff public and they release this type of documentation, which we normally don't see in the States. And uh, I'm not sure about other countries, but I... I don't recall seeing anything like this in the past, like back end contract negotiations uh, that are done between these companies and really that tit for tat uh, type of conversation that they're having right now. But it's pretty cool to see those back end negotiations overall. Um, I, you know, I would say for sure, Sony definitely does not want this merger or acquisition to happen. And I'm pretty sure most gamers also don't want this acquisition to happen because, you know, you're right in in the sense of you know, Call of Duty going on to Game Pass and then it's a day one type of release and why am I going to pay a full price for Call of Duty if that's all I pay, right? Or if that's all I play. Um, Why would I stick with Sony versus just playing Call of Duty somewhere else? Totally understand that point. And what I think needs to happen at this point is, you know, I see this as more fuel for Sony to kind of step up their game and purchase additional studios and take away games that Microsoft would typically, you know, be driving away from sony like over to their console because when it comes to like call of duty and all that like those players are gonna i've always heard a vast majority of players actually play on xbox or pc so i don't know that sony's really going to be taking a huge hit in regard to those exclusive like exclusive players it's the biggest selling game on every platform every year that it releases no i get that and it's a very popular game and then Um, all the microtransactions they get a cut of every one of those sales that happens yeah yeah i guess that's true so i mean that's you know, why I Fortnite, just... like you know if Fortnite was gonna go away from like one platform and another like that would be like a huge deal yeah you know one thing i would ask though here is if you're exclusively playing call of duty though like say you just have a hundred thousand people or a million people that just play call of duty on playstation and that's all they play and they go away right is that as big of a hit to Sony if, say, Sony does purchase Square Enix and starts bringing over all the Final Fantasy games, all of the games that would be on Nintendo but are now not on Nintendo because they're going to be on Sony exclusively? That's that's the that's the thing that I think hurts the most is that, like, we finally live in an age now where, like, you know, you everything from your phone on up you can basically play like every final fantasy up to 10. And then on a lot of platforms, you can play like 10 on up. Like I played 12 on my switch, which was great, Mm -hmm. you know, to not have to go all the way back to like the PS two to play it. But then it's like, if they're going to just shutter that, that would be really unfortunate. Yeah, because having I mean, it, all those available on Switch is too good. Well, I mean, it does kind of bring that question into light, though, right? Like, are you going to start getting Nintendo gamers who specifically like to play 
Square Enix based RPGs or Square Enix games. And now well, all of those games are only on Sony. And it's not like they only do Final Fantasy. See, they're trying to go into PC a lot, too. So if if they get Square and then they start releasing everything on PC, well, now with that back catalog of Square stuff and like maybe Square stuff that they haven't been able to re-release as much or haven't really had the funding, like if Sony could step in and be like, okay, Square, like let's just do a giant like, what you did for Final Fantasy for Chrono Cross or, you know, Chrono Cross, Chrono Trigger. Like, let's do it like huge remake and put that on our own launcher on PC as well as PlayStation platforms. And then, you know, that would be a huge deal. And Microsoft really needs what Square makes because that's their weakest thing is they don't have like killer RPGs and they really could use some of those. Yeah. And it's definitely Square will never go to Microsoft. I can't see it ever happening. No, just, no, they would never yeah. go there. But like just the ability to have them like, well, I'm I mean, pretty purchased. sure you can get all the Kingdom Hearts on Xbox. You can. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, but for that to wise. go away would be devastating. Yeah. Can you imagine if Sony were to purchase uh, Square Enix? And I've then, been imagining it for years. Every I time I hear about a uh, purchase, I think that instinctively. Yeah, I, I can't see Nintendo doing it, but they could be a player as well, just because of the Japanese company aspect. But dude, if Sony were to purchase Square Enix and then announce a completely remaster of, you know, just, yeah, remaster of Chrono Trigger. You know, there was a, a post thing this week. Somebody reposted something for or really, it wouldn't Legend be a remaster. It'd be, it wouldn't be a remaster. It'd be considered um, if it did a remake. Sorry, not a remaster. A remake of Chrono Trigger with next gen graphics exclusive to PlayStation. How yeah. many Nintendo gamers do you think that don't have a PlayStation would dive in on PlayStation 5 to play that game? Well, I mean, it was a yeah, it it. it it was the game that everybody always wants to see, but it's, it is never announced. Yeah. And that's the difference I can see from like, if Microsoft said, you know, what, screw you, Sony, we're not going to sell call of duty on your console. There's also enough first person shooters. Out they there. already said that they're going to keep selling. I, I know, but I mean, they can always take that back. That can always be taken back. So unless there's contractual obligations, maybe for the next few Call of Duties. But over time, Microsoft may be like, no, we're done. We're not going to, you're blocking games from Game Pass. You're doing all these other practices. We're just not going to partner with you in this respect. And you get no more Call of Duty. I think there's enough other like first person shooters out there that it doesn't really matter. If I'm exclusively Sony and I'm playing Call of Duty and I love Call of Duty, but they're like, oh, no, you got to buy Xbox now. or You got to get Game Pass. I might just be like, you know what? There's other first person shooters out there for me to enjoy and play they're still like competitive what? uh apex is one that comes to mind right off the bat it's a very competitive well that's uh, a whole different game i that's get like it like a hero game i get it but it's first person shooter and there's other things like what is it uh PUBG, i think is one that's only on pc right uh you still have fortnite technically um which is third person yeah I but those fortnite. are those are all like well i don't know maybe maybe that old style of shooters just dead it's, now it's the competitive aspect that drives people to those games. It's not the fact that it's Call of Duty. It's the competition that's tied to it. So if you have a game know, that man. is equally as impressive as Call of Duty, and Call of Duty is not very impressive to begin with. Call of Duty does those numbers, though. They do. They do. It's just like Assassin's Creed. Assassin's Creed sells a million copies every year as well. It's not. It, it's more of a gameplay, I feel, with some of it. Like, for first-person shooters specifically, I think it's more so of a gameplay. Yeah, and they've got, like, the best shooting. And the competitive atmosphere. If you take away that game, there's other competitive atmosphere-based games out there. You might not get 100% of Call of Duty players, but you're going to get a chunk of well, them and that Call remain. Call of Duty is a game where you don't have to run around and collect and build your stats and level up and all that stuff. Yeah, and Apex, you don't necessarily need to collect a bunch of things to level up your stats and all that as well. Yeah, dude, you you got to run around and get shields and like... Yeah, but most games are like that nowadays. Stuff. Yeah, Call of Duty has attachments and guns that require certain attachments and such. I don't know. I guess I just haven't played in forever. I guess all games are like that now. 
Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Exactly. So, like, there's so many that are out there, so many options nowadays. Call of Duty isn't like this premier franchise. Like, everybody gravitates towards it because it's been out so long. But there's other viable options out there. Oh, John, you know what? Actually, I do know uh, another shooter game that's probably just as comparable to Call of Duty that's going to be coming out soon. And what's that? It's called Squirrel with a Gun. Oh, oh, we're transitioning. Good transition. Good transition. <laughs> so, okay. uh, yeah, upcoming Steam game is literally just a squirrel with a gun. And if you haven't seen this, you need to go see this because it it looks so ridiculous. It's just like this little squirrel <laughs> and he just holds like a regular size gun. And it's just the scariest thing that you could ever imagine happening to you in your own backyard. So it's still in development, but the game Squirrel with a Gun is you play a squirrel and you grab human items. And one of the one of the gifts that it has or little clips is the squirrel picking up a, a handgun and chasing a guy down who falls uh, on his way running away. Um, but you can choose to help people or rob them as a squirrel. And they also have another like small video clip of him like carrying a cell phone and running away. But my favorite comments out of like that article specifically is saying like, they're so excited or it might just be a comment within like the bottom comments. But it's like, they're so excited that the game has the squirrel carrying an actual large gun because it would be totally unrealistic to think that squirrels are manufacturing their own little tiny guns. <laughs> <laughs> so like, yeah, it's good stuff. They've got a little clip. He's got like a, an Uzi and he's shooting it down and using the recoil to like fly. So it's probably yeah. going to be like a big open sandbox in this neighborhood I mean, who knows, like maybe this really takes off like Goat Simulator opened up a whole new world of things a while back. And and this is where we are now. Um, I love this idea for this game, and it is definitely one that I think I will have to play at some point. So not a whole lot on that one, but keep an eye out for uh, Squirrel for Gun. All right. And we'll probably get flagged by like Apple or something for talking about guns. So just watch out for that. All right. Our inflation deflation of the week. We played uh, Tony Hawk Pro Skater uh, 1 and 2, the remake. Uh, it was developed by Vicarious Visions, published by Activision, so bye-bye on Sony, uh, designed by Leo Zuniga and Devin Nudson, and it was released September of 2020. It was, of course, a sports game, and reception was a 9 out of 10. Um, so classic. Dude, having, yeah, classic. So having played the first ones uh, a lot when I was younger, I hadn't actually dove into this yet. Uh, and with this game, I, I felt it did a lot of justice for the old titles. I felt that it every, like the, so good. Yeah. It looks phenomenal. like it's one of those remakes that when you look at it, it's exactly what you remembered in but your better. mind, like remembering it, like that's how good it looked to you when you were a kid. And now it actually looks that good in real life like it's it's so fantastic like being able to drop into the warehouse and just like jump over the stuff and hit all the things like i suck so it's it's not really that easy <laughs> but i'm sure john had a fantastic time just nailing it yeah so the first i played a little bit of the first one i got to the school and said all right looked at time and i'm like let me go ahead and jump in on number two uh and dude the hanger just as i remember it uh mm -hmm. graphics obviously much better um i got to the fourth area which was let's see i got past france and then i dove into new york i think is the fourth area and so i was playing in new york and enjoying myself there but um i think the highest combo i got was like 75 or a hundred thousand points in like the school and it was just all like you know, manuals, grinding, wall jumps, wall rides, and then just like continuing on that combo to where it's like a 15 times combo, basically, or times 15 combo. And then, of course, landing it. And I mean, when you're landing that with like zero stats, I was like, I'm pretty impressed with myself having not played <laughs> this in so long. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, like it was it was a lot of fun. I did some of the free skate uh, to mess with that. Uh, that was a good time playing with free skate. And um, I didn't mess with any of the like uh creation aspects because in these games you're able to create your own like skate park basically mm -hmm. um but dude i remember having lots of fun with things like yeah things like captured a flag if i recall or like horse and other things yeah i um, did a lot of that in uh tony hawk 3 
Yeah, my brother and I would make like lava pits and stuff so we could mm-hmm. race courses. I think there is a race mode, if I'm correct. I don't remember. Um, but there's tons and tons of modes that you can play like within the actual like parks that you make for multiplayer. And it's a blast. The music itself is always good. Uh, I don't like rap, so I removed all the rap music. I don't remember that ever being a thing in the original game, so I removed them. But it's always good to skate when you got some Power Man 5000 in there. So that was fun to kind of revisit that and play the hangar. Um, oh, dude, for me, like the Tony Hawk song is definitely Superman. Oh, really? For you? Yeah, yeah. That's nice. like the Tony Hawk song in my mind. Yeah. So for me personally, uh, I definitely see this as a nine out of 10, 10 out of 10 game or rants. Um, yeah, rants. It's good, too. I don't know. Were they in there? I didn't check that out. I, I didn't see know. them. At I, least. I remember them from Thug 2. So I went I in and, it on my PSP and I would listen to the soundtrack. Yeah, there's a lot of small little punk bands in there. Um, a lot that I'm not used to or have ever heard of. I think there was some ska as well. I'm yeah, not a big ska big fan. Fish. Yeah, so they're in there, but I'm not a big fan of ska at all. So it's oh. not usually skater music is not usually my type of music. So there's a, enough bands that I enjoy it. But the majority of the time I'm skipping over songs. Yeah. So any favorite parts for you on this? Oh, just, I, uh, you know, I, <laughs> I suck at these games and, you know, I don't think I was ever like really good, but I did play them. So it's always fun for me to go back and check it out. Like, I don't know if this is something that I'm really going to like run downstairs and be playing again anytime soon, but it is kind of cool to know that if I ever do want to in the future, I basically have access to that as long as it's on PS plus and I pay my month. Yeah, or uh, if you look at the current prices right now, complete in box is running at fourteen ninety seven. That peaked, of course, when it was released at thirty eight dollars in September of twenty twenty. It's holding that fifteen dollar price point roughly. Uh, a loose copy doesn't run you much less, so you might as well go complete. Uh, loose is running fourteen sixty seven. That peaked at about thirty dollars in September of twenty twenty. It's currently holding its price point, and of course, as you mentioned, it's free right now on PlayStation Plus uh, until September six, I believe, is the mm-hmm. deadline on that. And then you can get it digitally uh, for forty for thirty nine ninety nine on Epic Games. Um, but I am also fairly certain you could still get a digital copy on Sony if you really wanted to just pay versus. Uh, have PlayStation Plus, and I think it's like forty dollars on there right now. Yeah, um, so the the regular price is forty, and then the version that they actually have on PS Plus, I think, is the digital like um, it's the version that has like the PS4 and the PS5 version. Yeah, so I so obviously downloaded the PS5. That version. one's like normally fifty. Yeah, and you know what? That's what it was. So I saw forty, and I did see fifty on there. Mm-hmm. for that because it gave me the option if i want it it's stupid it gave me the option if i want to purchase the game outright it's like no that's you not know happening. i do like now uh since they did the revamp they've got like the playstation plus icon that i can just click on and it takes me right to the games to download it yes. always used to be stupid you had to kind of go through like two or three things to get to those games because the regular playstation plus icon would just take you to the like splash screen for the month and like how to sign up yeah and it used to be at least on ps4 you'd have to go into the playstation store scroll mm-hmm. down to playstation plus go to yeah. playstation plus scroll Way over till you got to the free games like now like i honestly hadn't really noticed on ps5 um before but yeah like i just clicked the ps plus button and it took me right to what i wanted which was mm-hmm. nice so it's good stuff. Uh, all right, dude. So 1497, I think that the game is deflated. I think if uh, if this game was still 20 bucks, I would be happy to pay $20 for this game. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, this is definitely one of those ones that I think is worth picking up in a physical because games like this with all that music eventually you're not going to be able to pick this up digitally and it's not going to be available unless they keep up all that licensing or they future proof the licensing on it somehow. And, you know, that's probably one of the things that people from the original to this one will have the most discrepancies with. Like, I don't know both of the track lists, like the back of my hand. So I'm not going to tell you what's missing and what's not, you know, there but i'm sure that there's stuff that's different and i'm sure people who really put in the time on the originals probably 
you know, that's one of the things that's sorely going to be missed. And again, if it ever happens in the future, it'll be the same thing again. Yeah. And, you know, in my view on this at 1497, or let's just round up to 15, you're getting two games. Plus you're getting a, a park creator um, that you can also play your own creations. So infinite game. It, in a sense. Yeah. There's a lot of infinite gaming. There's time attacks, which is open by the way, to all of the areas when you play time attack mode. There's no, oh, I have to unlock this in the main mode to get to it. Like I was playing Venice Beach with no issue earlier. Um, so I do think that's a lot of fun having all of that stuff widely available to you from the start. Two games of one plus a park creator. Yeah, you, you can't beat that. Like that's good stuff. Like I, dude, I just sold a copy of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater to an N64 for $22 to somebody plus fish shipping. So they yeah. pay with tax and everything. I think it was like 28 dollars when all was said and done for that copy of number two on the n64 when they could have just bought the remake and had two games for less and better graphics so yeah totally deflated this week yeah and you know this one will probably i mean it's still like a super new game and it's already down to under 15 like there's every chance that this will be like a ten dollar game in like a year or two Shit, not even that. You can probably find it 10 now <laughs> in some places. So, yeah, definitely be on the lookout for this game if you haven't picked it up yet. And uh, it's, of course, worth playing, in our opinion. All right, well, uh, next week, of course, continues sequel month, which I don't know why we didn't do it in September, but I guess since I'm going to be taking care of a baby, it doesn't make sense to do sequel month in September. Well, because because of, of Game On. Oh, yeah, that's right. Remember Game On. That's game right. Game Fighter Strike Back. Yeah, that's true. The Game of Flyer Strike Back kind of started it. I get it. I get it. I just, I like, I don't know, September and sequel just kind of flow, but I guess August and next year will Ew, also be dude, sequel Dude, no, month. we can't have Seep-tember. Seep-tember? <laughs> that's gross. <laughs> but how is it August school's game month? I don't I don't know. August school. It's a sequel month to July. That's what yep. it is. <laughs> okay, it's a sequel to July. All right, well, we'll figure out what we're going to play next week. You'll be over here and I don't know. We'll look at what's on the wall. I like, or actually the walls. It's no longer the wall anymore because I have two walls of games. Multi walls. Is, oh my God. So good. So good. All right. Well, this has been episode 196 of the Game Flares podcast. My name's John. I'm Ryan. And thanks for listening. <laughs>